Hello and welcome to our discussion on accounting. In this session we will concentrate on understanding the impact of debt equity ratio, impact of debt equity ratio on the earning per share, on the interest coverage ratio and on the weighted average cost of capital. We know that the debt equity ratio, debt equity ratio shows the financing decision of the company. In other words, debt equity ratio shows how is the company financing its assets. Company with a high debt equity means it is using more of debt and less of equity while financing its assets. But if the debt equity ratio is uh, less than one, that means the company is using the more of equity. So DER may be equal to one, DER may be equal to one, DER may be greater than one, and DER is less than one. The, for example, let us take some companies and see this. So let me increase the font size, uh, the screen. So let us concentrate on these companies. So these companies show the debt equity ratio. Most of the companies given here, these are all power companies. The debt equity ratio of most of the power companies is less than one, except Adani and Power Grid and Suzlon, the that means they are using more of equity to finance the assets. But if you see the debt equity ratio of FMCG companies, in in all the companies the debt equity is less than one. That means all these companies are financing their business more with equity and the dependence on debt is low. In Adani Power Power Grid and Suze Loan, the debt equity ratio is greater than one. That means that using more of debt in comparison to equity. But one question that should come to our mind that what is the effect of high debt equity ratio or a low debt equity ratio? To understand that we say the debt equity ratio affects earning per share, affects the interest coverage ratio and affects the weighted average cost of capital. So let us take a simple example to understand that. So capital employed of this firm is 100,000. The rate of interest in the bonds or the loan is 10%. The face value of the share is 10 and the tax rate. We'll use this data to understand the effect of the debt equity ratio on the earning per share, on the earning per share. So we make an assumption here that debt, the capital employed consists of debt and capital only. No equity for the, no retained profit for the time being. Suppose we assume the debt equity ratio to be one. In that case, the debt and equity are the same amount, okay? And if the debt equity ratio is one, the debt is 50 and capital is 50, the PBIT is given, suppose we take PBIT, PBIT is 20%, okay, so this is also a given information, so PBIT is 20% of the capital employed, 20% of capital employed, interest on the debt is point uh, it's uh, into 10 percent is given here so PBT is 20,000 minus 5,000 the tax is given at 30 percent so there a number of shares uh, because the face value is 10 so face value is 10 so the earning per share when the debt equity is 1 the earning per share is 2 let us increase the debt equity to three. That means the debt is three times of equity. So 75,000 is the debt 
and 25,000 is equity. We are keeping the debt equity, the debt and uh, capital ratio change different, but the capital employed is same. So in that case, the PBT will be same because we are keeping the return on capital employed to be constant. Interest amount will depend on the amount of the debt and um, the the tax will depend on the amount of intra amount of income and the number of shares have come down the number of shares is now changing so the earning per share goes up to 3.5 3.5 per share let us take one more number if the debt equity ratio is uh, 4 so 80,000 and 20,000 respectively. The PBIT is no change. Interest is 80,000 into 0.10. So the tax will depend on PBT and the number of shares is changing. So EPS has gone up. So in the debt equity ratio, is increasing from 1 to 4 the earning per share has gone up from 2.1 to 4.2 so in other words that in the debt equity ratio affects the earning per share and in this example or as of now the higher the debt equity ratio higher is the EPS so higher the DER higher is the EPS but is this going to happen every time so let us pick up this example and change the number okay so I keep the amount of debt to be uh, the total uh, capital employed to be constant the debt equity will also be constant okay so the debt equity ratio is same 134 all that we are going to change suppose this is 9% so PBIT is 9% so point, uh, zero 0.09 so point zero 0.09 in all the three cases interest is point 0.10 so in all the cases point 0.10 and the tax will be 0 0.30 and the tax will be 0 0.30 and uh, the, the, the rest of things remaining same the EPS is now inversely is higher the debt equity lower is the EPS now so higher the debt equity lower is the EPS so that means in the first case by increasing the leverage we are increasing the profit generating ability profit distributing ability but here by increasing the leverage we are reducing the profit distributing ability why is this happening in this case the rate of interest in this case the rate of interest is high is lower than the return on capital employed so let me write down that here the return on capital employed is greater than the rate of interest whereas in this case the return on capital employed is less than the rate of rate of interest so if the rate of interest is less than if the rate of interest is less than the return on capital employed all other things remaining constant higher the debt equity ratio will lead to higher earning per share but if the rate of interest is greater than the return on capital employed then higher the debt equity ratio will lower the earning per share but you can ask a question here that if in this case if the amount of capital employed is increased will it be same will the 
result be same so let us see that so we keep the constant we we just increase everything the capital employed to 200,000 capital employed 200,000 the debt equity ratio remaining same I'm keeping the debt equity to be same 3 by 4 so 150 and 50,000 and 160 160 and 40,000 respectively the PBIT we are keeping that to be 0 0.20 interest will be on 0 0.10 then tax will be on 0.3s at 0 0.30 so you can see that in this case also you higher the capital employed but the focus was on the change in the debt equity ratio so the change in the debt equity ratio in this example higher the debt equity ratio higher is the EPS but interestingly in both the cases we can see that interest coverage ratio interest coverage ratio is falling interest coverage ratio is the how many times your profit is covering your interest so interest was covering four times in early stages and is reducing to reducing to 2.5 2.5 that means with a higher and higher leverage you're exposing the firm to higher risk so all of the things remaining constant higher debt equity ratio is a lower higher EPS if the return on capital employed is greater than the rate of interest but higher debt equity ratio is lower EPS if the rate of interest is greater than the return on capital employed but in both the cases higher the debt equity ratio reduces the reduces the interest coverage ratio when it reduces that means we are assuming that the the, the 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 ability to meet the interest obligation or ability to meet the contractual obligation of interest payment reduces in the process you may be increasing the earning per share but you are exposing the firm to higher levels of risk but this risk is increasing despite the fact that we are keeping the rate of interest constant in fact in real life with the increase in the debt equity ratio from 1 to 4 no company no bank will give interest or they give loans at the same rate of interest at which they were giving at the debt equity ratio of 1 and debt equity ratio when it goes up to 4 then it's possible then the rate of in debt uh, interest on debt will also go up but keeping that constant we say that the interest coverage ratio drastically falls so that brings us to uh, back to our initial discussion that the debt equity ratio is important to understand because it reflects the financing decision moreover it affects the profit profitability in the form of profit distributing ability and affects the riskness of the firm because it affects the interest coverage interest coverage ratio Thank you very much.